I have a bit of a Goldilocks problem. When you think of quick and accessible game genres, city builders probably aren't at the top of your list. You probably think of games like City Skylines where you spend hours painstakingly laying out suburbs and worrying over the flow of traffic through an intersection. Or something like Surviving Mars where you can spend a dozen hours slowly building up your little Mars base only for the entire thing to collapse because you didn't make enough concrete or something. But that's kind of a steep time investment. Look, we're all busy adults here. Jobs, kids, other hobbies, there is a life to live outside of video games. And when you're busy making sure the kids get to soccer practice, you probably don't have it in you to brush away the pieces of that collapsed Mars base and invest another dozen hours into starting over. For busy people like us, that's the next two weeks of your free time just to get back to where you were. But I still love this genre. If you haven't noticed, I am a pretty creative individual that really enjoys making things, and so the idea of sculpting a city from the ground up is a very appealing one for me, even if it isn't the most feasible when you only get to relax and play a game once or twice a week. And so I'm always on the lookout for games that try to give you the same experience as one of those crunchier city builders in a fraction of the time. And over the years, I've highlighted a whole bunch of those games like Townscaper, Dorf Romantic, or Airborne Kingdom. But then we run into a different problem. All of these games are, well, they're a little lightweight. I'll admit that a lot of this has to do with my own personal preferences, but as enjoyable as they are, they never quite stack up to those heftier, less accessible experiences. I find myself in the unenviable situation of wanting a complex, fiddly, and mechanically crunchy simulator without any of the time to really devote to mastering such a thing. So this is my Goldilocks problem. I am obviously asking a lot of game developers to somehow deliver all of this. Too much, one could easily argue. Clearly, this is all my fault, and I simply have unrealistic expectations, right? I'm just being too picky. You can't have all the meat of a deep and nuanced city building simulation while also being accessible to a casual player in a game that only takes a few hours to play. It's like the project management triangle. You can have it cheap, fast, or good. Pick two, but you'll never have all three. The idea of a city builder that could do all of these things, that it can have deep and evocative gameplay mechanics while still being so casually accessible is simply unrealistic. My expectations are just way too high and it's a little unfair to demand a game meet them. A game like this could just never possibly exist. Except obviously this is all a bit and it does. Against the Storm's basic foundation is built on tried and true city building mechanics that you'll already be familiar with from games like Anno or Banished, where gameplay revolves around building up complex supply chains across multiple resources and tiers of construction buildings. The real fun of the game is in wrangling these supply chains and figuring out how you're going to find a way to pursue your primary objectives, which will push you to do things like produce luxury goods or go find ancient cursed tablets while also keeping everybody fed. And you need to balance and accomplish all of these goals with limited access to resources and a finite number of people to fill all these jobs. The fun is in looking at all of these restrictions and conniving a way to make it work. But Against the Storm's big twist is how it throws even more wrenches into that production pipeline by only giving you some of the buildings in that industrial pyramid. There are roughly 50 unique buildings or upgrades in Against the Storm, all of which build different important resources. A kiln, for example, could be used to make coal, bricks, and jerky, each of which you would need for very different reasons. But in any given run of the game, you will only on average unlock about a dozen of these buildings. Whereas most other roguelikes would randomly give you passive buffs or new weapons to sculpt each run's playstyle, your quote-unquote build in Against the Storm is composed of these dozen buildings that you receive throughout the game. If you were to directly compare Against the Storm in a game like Anno 1800, you would find that both games are appealing to a player in almost identical ways. However, Anno's supply chains are significantly more complex than Against the Storm's, quickly requiring way more resources across more complicated supply chains to keep your town growing. Against the Storm's villagers are much simpler folk, only wanting some biscuits, a house, and a pub to go hang out at to be content. But while the complexity is greatly reduced, the depth and challenge of these games is not, thanks to the frequent complications posed by the game's roguelike unlock system. In other words, the supply chain is simpler, but the tactical and logistical conundrums you'll have to tackle are not. And it means that Against the Storm can make city building every bit as satisfyingly crunchy as something like Anno, while also making it significantly easier to pick up and understand, and also create a game loop that you can fully explore in two hours rather than 20. If you've ever loved city builders and just can't find the time to indulge in that fondness, now is your time, and this is your game. 
But all right, this is just the starting line. We finished talking about why Against the Storm is playable. Now let's talk about why it is cool as shit. Against the Storm is set in a post-apocalyptic fantasy world where it is always, and I mean literally always, raining. This gives the game some really killer vibes. Trying to survive in a dark, spooky forest with a bunch of beavers in the middle of a perpetual thunderstorm is a real hashtag mood. But this setting also informs like 90% of the mechanics going on in Against the Storm, and they've come up with some really compelling ones. Baseline is how the titular storm influences the basic structure of the game. The storm comes in cycles, waxing and waning periodically, and as the storm worsens, life gets worse for your villagers. Crops stop growing, the heavy rain absolutely kills morale, supernatural events like unnatural hunger or infestations of weird fleshy tumors in your fields start happening, and this weird fungus called the blight rot starts growing on your buildings and making the town deteriorate. But more often than not, the storm is hibernating, and between these moments of sharply spiking difficulty, you have time to bolster your town, pursue objectives, and stock up resources for the next big storm. On lower difficulties, the phases of the storm are barely even noticeable, but once you graduate to a higher one, these storm phases give the game an incredibly unique and addictive rhythm. When the storm is receding, the game proceeds like any other city builder, but every dozen or so minutes, it kicks back up again and you enter damage control mode. For a few short minutes, the game really applies the pressure on you and forces you to explore the game systems to keep your town from getting overrun with blight rot, or worse, have your villagers run off into the night and leave you to fend for yourself. These moments of intensity are rare enough that they never become grating or make you feel like you're being held back from accomplishing your objectives, but they're harsh enough to sting you if you haven't properly prepared for them during the gentler phases. And the way gameplay completely shifts during high tide, giving you entirely different challenges, objectives, and strategies to manage both, is incredibly compelling. The rhythm here is perfect. It is also just one rhythm. Like a lot of other games, Against the Storm has core loops inside of core loops inside of core loops. A single cycle of the storm is a dozen minutes long, and every game will see you survive a dozen cycles, and in turn, each cycle of the world itself is about a half dozen games long. For every tiny storm you contend with in each individual game, there is the big one. The Blightstorm, which periodically wipes the face of the world clean in an apocalyptic tide, and this storm informs many of the game's broader meta elements. Just as how in moment-to-moment -moment gameplay you are constantly stocking up for the next big storm, over the arc of all these games you play, your goal is to stock up for the eventual apocalyptic one. In each individual game, you'll get a series of objectives sent to you by the powers that be, often to send surplus materials or painstakingly crafted trade goods onto the capital. Complete enough of these objectives and you'll unlock more buildings, cement the stability of the town, and eventually get your windscreen. Dawdle too long and try the Queen's patience, and you'll be replaced. Having a literal ticking clock for a game over might sound a little stressful, but the Queen's Patience is less of an active threat and more of a mercy rule for a stubborn player that's been spinning their wheels unsuccessfully for a few hours. It's yet another helpful tool I appreciate as a player with limited free time. The idea of a city builder with actual objectives and stakes is a bit of a rare concept. It's certainly not unheard of, but usually when a city builder tries to be something other than a creative sandbox, the stakes rarely get more nuanced than is your food number big enough to feed your population and continue growing, or are you starving? And against the storm, the stakes are much more focused. Can you spare enough workers to assemble and send this shipment of barrels that the capital's been demanding for the last two weeks? Can you find those ancient tablets the queen is hounding you to go discover? And how much are you willing to risk to do it? Can you find a way to survive long enough to unlock a new building and finally fix your damn biscuit pipeline? Against the Storm's objective system is a great touch of game design that, once again, ensures a well-paced, always engaging game. Having these stakes also does a lot to make the mostly world-building-based storytelling in this game feel important and vibrant. There's very little actually stated about the world here, and yet I find myself incredibly compelled by it. Aesthetically, Against the Storm is one of the most compelling fantasy universes I've stepped into in quite a while, and a large part of that has to do with just how well the universe and the mechanics are married together. I recently went on a bit of a bender when I reviewed Signalis and found myself completely bouncing off of the game's world-building as storytelling approach, and this is an example of how I personally think it can be done better. Paragraphs of dry world-building and random audio logs is not how you get me invested in your universe. This is. 
actually getting to live in it, to see how it behaves and have the way the world works actually influence how to play the game. It's a significantly lighter approach, but it's an incredibly compelling one that's made Against the Storm's universe more memorable with significantly fewer words. And I mean, yeah, that's also helped by the fact that there are cool beaver dudes, but tying everything so seamlessly together is definitely not something that happens by accident. And I do wholeheartedly believe that it makes Against the Storm a significantly stronger game. And in case my opinion isn't clear enough by this point, I think Against the Storm is, in fact, an incredibly strong game. So let's get to wrapping this up. What do you get out of five hours with Against the Storm? That's enough time to get through a tutorial and two more full games besides, and that's without really considering the usual suite of time manipulation options most real-time city builders provide. Want to play on two times speed? You could be in and out of a game in an hour. Feeling overwhelmed and need to pause a lot? Eh, might take you two and a half. For a city builder, that's ludicrously fast, and the fact that Against the Storm can pull that off and still be so immensely compelling should be more than enough to get it on your radar. There are a few overarching meta elements in Against the Storm that will stretch out over the course of a couple dozen hours, but they are the game's most peripheral details, and they won't really affect your experience too heavily. Having spent a dozen hours going through the entire cycle of the Blightstorm, I don't think you're missing anything if you never get that far, or like my experience is demonstrably different playing on a second cycle. Against the Storm is an immediately accessible game that simplifies a lot of the genre's complexity while still maintaining an addicting level of depth and strategy. It's a game where literally every piece clicks together to make a bigger, cooler whole, whether that's the way the roguelike elements keep its logistical issues fresh on repeat runs, or how many of its mechanical and narrative concepts are so tightly tied together. It's the first city builder I've played in a long time that genuinely feels like it's doing something new and revolutionary, and it is a perfect fit for anyone strapped for time. I've spent my entire month obsessed with this game, and I cannot recommend it enough. And if it weren't for all the wonderful folks over on Patreon that keep the lights on here at First Five, I literally would not be able to recommend it. So let's take a quick minute to thank all the brave pioneers that support First Five out of the kindness of their hearts. Without your contributions, First Five would not be able to function. And remember, you could always be one of them. If you like the work I do, you could be right up here with them in the credits for the low, low cost of $5 a month, as well as in the First Five Discord and getting video essays a day before everybody else. You can find a link down in the description, as well as right here in the end card. You can also find me over on Twitch these days, where I'm hard at work researching games for my upcoming Timestrap Gamer's Guide project. So if a casual afternoon stream is something you enjoy, you can add First Five Review to your streaming diet. I hope you all enjoyed this review of Against the Storm, and I'll see you all next time.